I can hear your voice. Can you take that kid out, please? I expect ushers to act quick in matters like this. Help the mother and take the baby out, please. And take, take, go and take care of that child. You know, God spoke to us about this month. While we were entering this month in last month's overcomers, someone tell me what God said. That this month will be a month of thank you. I'm sure you got it. You got the A's, isn't it? He reached me too. <laughs> he reached me. I mean, whenever God speaks through me, I always expect you to testify. I seldom will look at myself in it, not because I'm excluded, but because that is the construct of my brain. It's for you. But when I encounter exactly what God said, I will tell you humanly, sometimes it shocks me. I say, God, so you remember me too? <laughs> Amen forevermore. And so when it reached me, I know that it reached everybody. But you know something about prophecy, Second Chronicles 2020. If you are in this church and God speaks and the month passed and you did not encounter, let me tell you the reason why. Because you did not take the prophecy to heart. When God speaks, each time God speaks, it takes people to pray the manifestation. God spoke about Jesus for 4,000 years. When it was time for Jesus, there was a gap of 400 years or 450 that the voice of God was not heard. That is from Malachi to Matthew. But in the midst of it, two people were outstanding, which means for that 450 years, God was speaking, but to selected few. And among them was Hannah and also um, the prophetess Hannah and um, Simeon, or Simeon, who is the man. And they were the one who, when it was time for Christ to come, one of them, the prophetess, Anna, she was married and she was divorced. She was widowed. Sorry, not divorced. She was widowed. And when she was widowed, she decided not to marry again until she was 83. She fasted and prayed daily for Jesus to come. And when she began to do that, God told her that you will not die until you have seen the boy Jesus. Same thing with Simeon. They didn't have cooperation. They didn't know one another. He began to pray because they read from the book of the prophet Isaiah. And so because they began to pray about it, God said to him that you too will not die unto your sin. That's why when he came to the temple and cried, the baby says, let me depart now for my eyes have seen the salvation of your people. So prophecy does not manifest in life for people who do not remember it. Because I'm treating the, the I'm, I'm devil expositions when I'm treating. And we are going to look at some things today. The reason why many believers are robbed is because of the silent operations of Satan. The Lord was speaking to me this morning while I was preparing for this meeting. Some of the information that I had from God are amazing. Very much amazing. There are things that you have read, but when God began to show them to me in, in light of the satanic operations in the last days, I was shocked. I was shocked. And we'll go through today. Today, you lend me your hearing and get ready to write. So whenever God speaks in the church that this is what I will do this month, everyone who gave testimony on Friday, you bear me witness. They were mindful of it. 
they prayed daily about it, they expected it daily, and they had the manifestations. I mean, strange manifestations. But I tell you that not all, not all of them came out on Sunday, on Friday. Though those who came out are, are, you know, very, very interesting. But there are other people who have shared testimonies with me who didn't come out on, on Friday. Because even there, was not, there, there wouldn't be time to take everybody. So understand this. The principle of God is very simple. It's the same principle that guides your, your success in life. What is the difference between a student that fails an examination and a student that passes examination? You know, they teach you for a period, and then they will test you for the period. And some students will come out in flying colors. Some students will be struggling in the examination, and they will come out fail. Both of them pray to God, and God answered the prayers of both of them. The answer of one is to make him fail. The answer of the other is to make him succeed. Because God had given the principle of choice for both sides. If you follow the principle to fail, when you pray for success, answer of it is failure. Do you understand what I'm saying? Did you understand me? Come on, let's talk to me. Somebody decided not to take to heart lectures of seven weeks. Another student continued every week to read what was given and take it to heart and link the first week lecture with the second week lecture, with the third week lecture, with the fourth week lecture, to the seventh month lecture conscientiously. And the other student just do one week and forget it. Second week, you forget it. Third week, you forget it. All right. And then seventh week, they are tested. Both of them are praying for success. God answered both of them. But when God will answer, he will answer you according to your deeds. Jeremiah tells us that. Because God is equitable God. So for the one who did not take the things to heart, certainly answer to his prayer is to fail. So that he will sit down and learn again. And then take what is taught to heart. Because God is not a respecter of man. And God is equitable. He is very conscionable in his approach to humanity. He does not discriminate between a born again and a non-born again when it comes to common word benevolence. It says in the book of Proverbs 6, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of arms, and what will happen? Poverty will jump upon you, whether you are born again or you are not. So what do you think the devil would do to a Christian? A little lazy, a little sleep, a little slumber. Simple. And Christian will fast and pray and fast and pray. God answer the prayer, he will fail. Because God has to make him fail. Because that is his work he has produced. God doesn't perform magic, neither does he respect anybody. He sets his rules. You obey his rules. You get the results. And God is a God that pays each man according to the works of your hand. So God will be very, very unjust to give success to a person who deliberately is lazy, or to give vision or revelation to a person who does not seek him with his heart, or to send an angel to somebody who does not take him serious. Do you understand what I'm saying? Come on and let's speak together. You know, we are talking about satanic operations in the last days. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. So, if God speaks to you and you did not remember it to ask of it, how would you receive it? Let me tell me it's not possible. Because for you to receive, you must ask. But you cannot ask if you don't understand what you're asking for. So God said that it would be the month of ease, as many who believed it experienced it. Well, I, sometimes we used to do bulletin. I think we are going back to it by, from the month of July. Because COVID, you know, changed the method of many things. And so by July, this church is going back. I've been telling you that from January. They will be going back into full operations and everything we're doing before COVID, we're going to do. You know, we're going to reinstate them. You need to understand the equity of God. You need to understand it. 
what God was speaking to me today will be the premise of our discussion next week. Now, let me give you a brief summary. We are looking at devil exposition. Yes? Come on now, church. Devil exposition. The reason why we are looking at devil exposition is because God is our creator. Jesus is our friend. But the devil is our enemy. Let me take us through brief scriptures and then we move on to today. So, in the book of 1 Peter, chapter 5, 8 to 10, it says, Be self controlled and alert to enemy the devil. Prowls around looking for someone to devour. So, we identify that the enemy of mankind is what? The devil. I showed you in the scripture by evidence of the Bible that God did not create devil, neither did he create Satan. He created Lucifer, Isaiah 14, 12. But then, when sin was found in him, he adopted the name devil or Satan, Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. And of course, we looked at Ezekiel 28 to see from verse 12 as well. The formation of Lucifer. And one of the things that you must not forget is that he was an anointed cherub. God anointed him. God created him for the purpose of him to be the model of perfection. I think that is an office that is outstanding among many offices. It is not a common office of other angels. Angels differ from glory to glory, as stars also differ from glory to glory, as human beings also differ from glory to glory. That is, the beauty and glamour of each person differ from one to the other. But of all things that God created in heaven and on earth, he created one, and he called that one model of my perfection. You know, those of you who are artists will understand very well, you know, when you look at very, over the period, I've been talking about, um, you know, the, 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 this Italian artist who everybody wants to see what his, what his artifacts is. So Jesus, uh, God himself, as a, as a craftsman, having created so many things, God just said, look, let me create one thing. And when every creature will see that thing, they will, they will bow to my perfection. Now, what confidence can God have in a being beyond that? Yes? So God had confidence in him. And God gave him everything he needs. Things he never imagined, God made. So that when Lucifer is walking in heaven, people are beholding the perfection of God and they are glorifying the God that lives forever and ever. Yes? But the Bible tells us in that Genesis chapter, in Isaiah chapter 14, that something generated from within him, and that is what you call sin today, and he fell and lost everything. So, when you see ministers who are anointed by God, God use them for miracle signs and wonders. They can see, you know, all manners of stuff. And suddenly they begin to dive into all manners of things and, you know, begin to lie and deceive and, and you know, maybe commit adultery and continue to do that and then expose. And some people have said, because this minister, I respect this minister so much because he's so, and look at what he's doing now. They walk away from God. Who won? Satan. Who will pay for it? That one who walked away from God, because of a man, will surely go to hell to pay for it. Apart from that, on earth, Satan will be very happy with him because he will 
let him prosper a little while and then he will unleash hell against him and god will not be able to help him because he's no more in the jurisdiction of god and god does not break protocol so such is the life of many who are suffering who knew god at the beginning and they are suffering because you do not serve god because a bishop or a prophet or apostle or pope serve god you serve god because god is god so if satan can get any of the dignitaries in the church and you are so ignorant that anybody regardless of your anointing satan can get you and the conditions i'm going to help you to understand what you need to know that the devil will not be able to get you anointing does not protect your soul if it does lucifer will never have become the devil and you can imagine how many christians have left church or churches across the globe saying that because a christian somebody they expected to be a standard is not how many how many how many both to the one that fell and to the one who deserted who is behind it the devil the devil so therefore i run you through this very very briefly your enemy is the devil not your father not your mother not the witch in your house not the wizard that is afflict trying to afflict you but those human beings are vessels so what god told me was speaking to me about now is that in this i taught you that there are two kingdoms that are on earth you must not forget it the kingdom of god and the kingdom of satan we read in the book of uh, 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 revelations uh, in the book of romans chapter chapter 8 from verse 1 to 4 about kingdom of god and in the book of ephesians chapter 2 1 to 4 we read about the kingdom of satan both of them are in this world now haven't we known that you know the lord said to me that let me show you about say operations of the kingdoms <laughs> all right now keep this in your mind you will need it shortly if a kingdom is on earth certainly that kingdom must have human vessel to operate because spirits don't speak in this world are we in agreement those of you up there you agree with me good now if i have something in my mind and i want you to know it there is no way you can know it without my mouth speaking it correct so the one in my mind is the unseen so are spirits they are unseen so for the unseen to be made seen or known physical must take over so therefore government god has angels who are unseen spirits and human beings of which you are one of them i said you are one of them so satan has demons and he has human beings now in the month of june we are going to be looking at the 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 the, the um, governmental operations of satan on earth and of god you will agree with me that the bible tells in the book of daniel chapter 9 uh, chapter yeah chapter 10 about an angel called Gabriel, and he told you in chapter 11 about the prince of Persia, Persian kingdom and he spoke rather at the last of that chapter the prince of greece and he says the angel who was bringing the, the report to daniel said i was bringing you the reports you know what you asked from god but the the, the prince of Persian kingdom hindered me for 21 days what does that mean don't miss june is it a fairy story don't miss june in this house 
I beg you to serve God with all your heart. Human beings don't have more time on this planet. I beg you to, to just serve God. I will help you to see in the scriptures and in the physical that these things in the scriptures are not stories, but they are real to today. But then if you look at, that reflects an embodiment of angels that are fallen who have been appointed not by God, but by Lucifer because no angel has appointment on earth except what God has delegated them to go and come back. But when Satan fell, he distributed the government of this world under angels that are fallen angels. And one of them is the prince of Persian kingdom. Can you imagine? How do you know that? Because God was sending a message to somebody on earth who was praying. Okay? And then somebody came and stopped the messenger of God. Who can stop the messenger of God? It's the devil. <laughs> it's the spirit. It's praying like him. So, and I will help you understand why that happened at that time and also answer the question, can that happen in this season? I will help you answer that question you see in the Bible. Because some people are still saying that those kind of things, you know, because they happen in the Old Testament, so they happen in this uh, Testament. But I will let the Bible help you to understand the difference between the old and the new. However, in that story, in chapter 11, a reflection of two agents. One agent is a messenger from God sent to the earth to bring the reply of prayer of a saint of God on earth who is making supplication. And that tells you and I that whenever you pray on earth, an angel is sent by God to bring the answer to your prayer, but also help you to understand the question of why have I been praying and God did not answer me? That answer is in that chapter. <laughs> it's in that chapter. We look at it in June. However, it also reveals to you and I that there are some spirits in the air, all right, that Satan had deployed in the air to try to sabotage every effort of human agents of God on earth. However, beyond that too, if Satan has agents who are assigned to nations and stuff like that, does God have agents? Yes. And Daniel chapter 12, verse 1 answers that verbatim. We we'll look at that critically in the month of June. Month of June, I will take you on a ride to what we call the realm of the spirits. Some of you will access that realm. That's why I began to beg you to serve God with your heart. Because you don't get there because you believe so. You get there because you paid the price to serve with your heart. That's the entrance to the gate. It's not how long I have been a Christian. Now, therefore, because what God revealed to me is so voluminous, it's not what I can cover with you just in this 30 minutes I will speak to you. Let's go further down. So, for the sake of those who are recording, and you ask Apostle that, what is the theme of today's meeting? I will tell you satanic operations of the last, in the last days. Of course, in the prophetic voice ministers meeting on tomorrow, I will spend one hour talking about satanic operations in the church of the living God. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, no praise and worship. I come in, we open the service, I start talking. Because, you know, you need knowledge. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. And knowledge is boldness too. Am I true? And knowledge is faith. Because faith comes by. And what? By? I'm going to Nigeria. If I say this in Nigeria, you will see how they reply me. What's wrong with you British people? I say faith comes by what? And hearing? Okay, you save yourself. I will, I will remain in London. Ah, which one you did? <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Minister Apostle Williams is part of what is on the ground. Did you see it? Change that background. Give me more beautiful background when you put my name on board. All right, now. <laughs> At least I'm handsome. So don't, don't, don't answer that. My wife and I have been arguing over this issue of handsome or no handsome. Yesterday we had marriage seminar. Where were you? We have been arguing that I'm as, ha I'm as handsome as handsome. And I told her she has been beautiful as beautiful. But she said, you are looking old. <laughs> I said, who told you that? How can you dare tell me that I'm looking old? She said, your neck. I said, I need to change your glasses. <laughs> Amen. Now, so we're looking at satanic strategy uh, operation in the last days. Write this down. The devil always seeks to control the world. The devil is always seeking to control this world. You know, whoever is on the steering wheel determines where the world will end. If God is on your steering wheel, you will end where he's going because he's the one driving your life. If Satan is on your steering wheel or man is on your steering wheel, they will take you to their destination. And the Bible says, Jesus said that the hell is prepared for Satan and his angels. So, woe is the man or pity is the man who satan is in the standing wheel of his life because he will wake up into an eternity in hell this is the reason why you must understand these things that i'm sharing with you satan seeks to control the world so if he seeks to control the world certainly he it is by controlling humanity we agree together we agree together Come on, we agree together. Well, never mind. When I move, you can change your, your projector. You can change your stuff so that people can see me up there. Yeah, so, so if Satan seeks to control the world, I believe we can agree that he will have to take over the judiciary, the legislator, and the executive of the world. Do we agree? Because the judiciary make your laws, that your legislators make your laws, judiciary enforce the law, and the executive run the government. Are we together now? I think that tells Christians that they nearly need to pray for anybody who is in those capacity, that the Bible commands us to do so. If you look back to the scripture that I gave you, that's the reason why, because Satan seeks to control your mind, the mind of your children and your grandchildren. 